and today we have Alan Johnson, the writer fighter. Uh, and I just got to take a second. The ancient Greeks had an ideal warrior scholar, right? They kind of had this idea that you needed to be able to not only win the debate, but the fight after. And I feel like our, our guest tonight really kind of brings that together. Uh, so, Alan, welcome. Good to have you Thank here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks. Good, good to be here, and uh, I hope I can do right by those ancient Greeks. <laughs> there we go. And uh, where are you joining us from? Let's just uh, set some groundwork here. All right. Well, I'm here in South Carolina, here on the East Coast, and uh, it's my home, and I love it here. And um, it's nice to be able to have uh, bright, sunny days and the beach nearby. Nice. Now, I understand you actually spent some time here in Utah. I'm, I'm here in Utah. Uh, what were you doing yes. out here? Well, I was out there. I actually got my degree in film from the University of Utah in Salt Lake. And then I lived out there for a while and worked. I did some acting for a little while and did some, uh, some other works on uh, film and uh, other projects. And after a while, I decided I needed to wander back to the south. And so I made my way back here. But I did definitely have some uh, fun and enjoyable memories of being there in the, in the hills. It's all about the adventures, right? That's right. Now... I'm going to jump right into it, and I'll have to admit to my audience, this is entirely selfish, right? This is just something that I want to know about. I hope it's interesting for you folks out there, but I, I got to be honest. This is for me. We got to talk about HEMA, right? Uh, All right, let's do it. <laughs> so I I'm actually going to let you uh, lead us off and tell the people what it is. What is HEMA? Well, HEMAS is an acronym for a Historical European Martial Arts. And what it is, it's, in a, it's a group of people that strive to um, research and uh, train and sometimes compete in historical European sword fighting. Um, now, I say sword fighting, but it also includes things like uh, pole arms, like uh, pole axes and spears and staves. Uh, it can also include things like rapier and dagger and uh, wrestling, pretty much anything that we can find a historic manual for or some sort of treatise on how to actually do this thing from the time period. Uh, we translate, we interpret and study, research and train from those things. And that is the, the bulk of what HEMA tries to do. And then there's also a competitive wing of HEMA that uh, that engages in sportified version of, you know, an attempt to recreate uh, that style of fencing from this period. Nice. So first question, of course, is, Alan, how many people have you personally killed in these competitions? Absolutely none. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I, I've probably done more damage to myself than anybody else. Yeah. Any stories there? Have you ever hurt yourself real bad while learning some of these skills? <laughs> um, I don't think, I, well, I, I, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> uh, I've had my nose broken three times uh, oh. through the course of training. Um, the first time is I actually caught a buckler across the nose and uh, it, it kind of smashed it there. Uh, the second time was uh, we were wrestling and I had my face on the ground and somebody rolled me over and, and my head rolled, but my nose decided to go a different way and that snapped it. it was and fine then the third time, we were, yeah, the, the, the third time we were just boxing and it just, just got hit. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I, I already love it because, yeah, you have all these different disciplines mm -hmm. feeding into this thing. Now, do you have a favorite sword? If I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the broadsword, uh, basket hilted broadsword. Yeah. Um, something. Uh, this is a good example. Ooh, show and tell. I love show it. Show and tell. Can't talk about swords without showing off a few. That's this right. Is a, a classic example of a, a basket hilt broadsword from the mid 1700s. Uh, actually, a little bit earlier, early to mid 1700s. And this actual piece was uh, is based almost inch for inch on a museum piece in Scotland. I had a very gifted smith that uh, that made this um, for me. And it, it fits really great. It's fantastic. Uh, it weighs just shy of three pounds and it just cuts like a dream. It's, it's a oh. beautiful, beautiful weapon. 
And this is probably as close to an original antique broadsword as you'll get in a modern reproduction. Um, it's just a really, really fantastic uh, blade. And I love its versatility. I love the hand protection that you get. It's really good at, at protecting your hand against cuts. And when things get nice and close, you can use it to remove teeth and shift noses to the side. I try to, to dole out a few since I've gotten some in return. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful weapon. I love it. All right. So a beautiful sword also has some, some dental capabilities. I like it. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's important to have multiple uses for a tool. Now, That's right. As expected, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. It was always going to happen. Let's dial back just a little bit. How did you get into this? Like, did you just wake up this morning and say, I need more sword battles in my life? Because I got to admit, that's happened to me. I, I, I don't see how people don't wake up wanting more sword battles in their life. But, you know, um, <laughs> no, I, I think like most um, like most people that come from the similar vintage, at least most men, um, that come from the same age as I do, and a lot of women as well. It's it's not it's not um, it's not universally true, but um, I was raised on a steady diet of swashbucklers and whip cracking adventurers and space wizards with laser swords and knights of the round table and and musketeers and all sorts of things like that was. That those were the stories that I was drawn to. That's what excited me as a kid. You know, anything longer than than a, than a ruler immediately became a sword or a lightsaber, and um, you know, I finally had to stop doing that. Uh, this was last week. I would um, say why. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, now I got the real toys. I can play with. You know. Ah, there you go. It, it was an upgrade. Stick down. Use your real sword. But this one's right here. You know. I, I um, still use no, the yardstick. I gotta say. You got to. <laughs> or you finish a uh, wrapping paper roll, the tube. You know, oh, it's, heck it's yeah. Happen. Yeah, it's well, the pool noodles. The best thing about the wrapping paper tube is you can use it on children, right? Whereas the yardstick will get people calling the cops. But, you know, wrapping paper tube, Make just sure go to the, town. The lines are drawn, you know. But there you go. Open. There you go. It's all good fun. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I grew up, um, you know, th those are my heroes. Those were those are the people that I um, wanted to be like. And uh, eventually, as I got older, you know, I kind of, I didn't really find a, an outlet for it until I started getting into college and I actually um, started training with the sport fencing team and ended up making the collegiate team and, and competed in Olympic style sport fencing for a few years. And, um, and then I, I had an experience where uh, I was introduced to the world of historic sword fighting and I didn't realize there was such a vast difference. And then that just changed everything for me. Uh, can you tell me about that experience? <laughs> at uh, at risk of, of of losing much of my credibility, no, it's 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 actually quite a <laughs> fun story. Um, so I was I was a decent fencer. I was a pretty good sport fencer. I wasn't like you know I wasn't going to be going to the Olympics or anything like that. But I I won more than I lost, so I I kind of knew what I was doing. Um, I was introduced to an individual who was part of. Uh, uh, a HEMA group, although at that point in time, HEMA wasn't really a brand name. Uh, I think we just called it Western Martial Arts or something like that. And, um, and you know, he kind of introduced himself as, hey, we're going to do some historical fencing. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I, I do that stuff. And kind of smiled and said, okay. Um, so I, I go out and join them for, for a practice. And um, he has a couple of rapiers there. Um, for those that aren't familiar with it, it's... Uh, some people affectionately refer to these things as princess bride swords. Nice. Um, uh, <laughs> this is a rapier. Um, so it's a very nice, great, fun weapon to play with. And it's light. It's It kind of resembles the, the sport fencing uh, weapons, but not really. Um, but anyway, so I handed, he handed me one of these things. And uh, we get ready to spar. And I, I get in my very, you know, classic fencing pose, you know, ready to go. And... Um, and when we, you know, kind of said go, I had, you know, had a mask on and a little chest protection, stuff like that. When we said go, I start towards him with my blade extended. This guy with a smile on his face steps up and he kicks my sword up in the air. Like I was still hanging on to it, but he kicks my <laughs> arm up in the air. And before I can even say swash my buckle, he rushes in on me, grabs me around the neck, throws me over the hip and slams me into the ground the air leaves my body and before it's invited back in, he stabs me about three or four times on the ground and then just steps back and smiles. 
and I it's, it's sputtering. I'm crawling to my feet. You know, I get up and I gasp something about cheating. And he just looks at me and says, this is a fight. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, oh. And the light comes on. <laughs> and, and, you know, all these bombs are going off inside my head because all of a sudden it's it's the, the reality of the shift between um, doing things to score the touch first versus hit and not be hit and hit them as hard as you can or at least strong enough that they don't come back and hit you. That whole concept completely flipped my perception of fencing upside down. And over the course of you know the next few weeks and then going on for the next number of years uh, studying it, I realized it's got very little to do with Olympic-style sport fencing. <laughs> and in relatively short order, I left the sport you know, alone, I kind of put that on the shelf and and moved fully into the the historical um, historic martial arts and stuff like that. At the same time that I was doing this, I was also getting into stage combat to use with my film work, and that was a whole nother you know twist to to the whole game as well. But that was kind of my introduction to the world of of uh, historical fencing. 